Hey everybody and welcome to my shop. As you know, I am currently working on converting a horse box trailer into a teeny tiny camper. And in the last couple of weeks, I have made a ton of progress. And this week it was time to work on three things that are essential for a good camping experience and that is insulation, windows and power. Let's start with insulation because it is a very very complex topic and there are many many opinions about how to do it right. If you are working on a camper or a van conversion I would highly suggest to do your own research I did mine and this video is about my conclusions, but everybody has to make that decision for themselves, I think. Why do we need insulation in the first place? Well, it helps you to control the temperature in your camper. So on a cold day, it helps you to keep it warm. And on a warm day, it helps you to keep it cold. But not only that, it also dampens the outside sound. So imagine you are in this tiny horse box and you're in a night full of heavy rain, it is a lot more comfortable to have the sound isolated a little bit. So insulation is not only for temperature control, it also helps you to control the sound. Now the problem with insulation, especially when you work in a car or a camper, is always moisture. You know that phenomenon from a cold can of beer on a hot summer day, the moisture from the air instantly turns into water when it hits the cold metal surface. It condenses and turns into water. And that is exactly what happens inside of a car. So I am in this sheet metal little room and even the moisture in my breath will hit the wall and then it turns into water. And that of course is not good because it can lead to mold and it just, you don't want water in there. So that's the whole issue with uh, insulation. Um, you can easily sink a couple hundred bucks into doing it 100% right. But I think there is a point of diminishing returns and there's a point where it doesn't make sense to spend so much money on it, especially in this tiny horse camper that is made of trash mostly. So this is how I did it. I decided to go with a product called Armaflex. Um, it's very easy to work with because it comes in sheets. You can simply cut it with a knife and it has a sticky surface so you can peel the backing off and then it sticks very, very well on, on the surface that you put it on. So my wall depth of the camper, the, the depth of the frame is three centimeters and the thickness of the armor flex is 2.5 centimeters. That means, so this is the sheet metal, the armor flex sticks right to it. There's no air between it. That means there can be, there cannot be any condensation water in between those two. And then here is the wall and there's a little bit of room 
where if moisture comes inside from breathing or whatever, it can vaporate out of it again. This is my, <laughs> this is my take on things. I guess we will see over the next couple of years how it holds up. And as I said, there are many, many different techniques on how to do it right or wrong or whatever. This is just how I decided to do it. Um, I think it will be fine. I spent about 170 euros on the Armaflex. I used 10 square meters for the roof and the walls and everything together. So 170 euros and I think it took me about three hours to install it. But you guys, let me know in the comments below, how are you dealing with insulation? What was your approach? How do you do it? I'm really interested to know, even though for this project for me, now obviously it's too late to change. Either way, let's jump into the next topic and that is windows. So the big window that I used in my caravan actually comes from an old caravan. I bought it online and I was lucky enough because the guy also had the frame that fit to it. So it was very, very easy to build it into my camper. The second window is, I think, for some kind of military vehicle. It doesn't have a frame, so I just used a bunch of Sikaflex. It's a ceiling adhesive. Um, I cut out the hole, put the Sikaflex on the window, put the window in there and added a couple screws just to hold it in place. That should be fine too. And that is pretty much all I have to say about windows, except for one very, very important detail. Uh, I'm not sure if that is the rule in every country, but at least in Germany, you cannot take any window and build it into a vehicle. You can only use windows that are made for vehicles that have a certain kind of safety glass. For older windows, that safety glass can be identified by this little squiggly line. Uh, newer windows have a different code, just look it up online just to make sure that you can actually use this window and won't run into problems later on. Because once the window is in there, it will hopefully stay in there. And now last but not least, let's talk about power because that's another super essential thing and very, very important for a comfortable camping experience. So at least you can, you know, charge your phone, have some reading lights or whatever is necessary for you to take on a camping trip. I decided to go with a Go Zero 100 watt solar panel that lives on top of my roof rack. So it is collecting power even when I'm driving. It is always set up. The only thing I have to look after is that it is clean, but that, that is it. Other than that, I don't have to worry about it at all. And the cool thing about the Go Zero panel is that it is compatible to all of the power banks. That means I can kind of see what I really need. How much power do I need to conserve? And for now, I am starting with a combination of two banks. And the first one is the Jedi 500. This one will live in the camper. It will be placed there permanently and I can hook up my lights and whatever onto it. And I also have the second one, which is the Jedi 200. It's a bit smaller. It's very light, very portable. So I can just take it with me whenever I need power outside of my camper. So for a picnic or you want to go to the lake and still bring a charger to charge your phone or some music, whatever it is. I think this is a winning team. If not, I can always upgrade or downgrade or whatever. It is interchangeable and that's what makes it very, very easy. 
Wow, <laughs> that was a lot of info. I hope I didn't overwhelm you guys. It is those things like I love the projects that have a lot of visual progression, that have a visual effect, you know, building furniture, all these things. But at the end of the day, they are always the sides of the projects that are a little more theoretical. I have to do a little bit more research. And that was definitely it. Insulation and power, you have to know what you need. And I'm really happy that I now got this behind me and I'm ready to go. Before you are ready to go though, I want to tell you one more thing. And that is these awesome Makers Love Equality shirts are now in my shop. Let me show you the bag. It's it's pretty cool. I am, I am so happy with how they came out. Either way, <clears throat> I have them in white and I have gray hoodies and you can buy them in my shop. Oh, they're all on um, ecological, or let's say as ecological and as fair as I could print them. They also ship without plastic, so I really try to make an effort to make this as pro-planet <laughs> as possible. But I also made the design downloadable for free. So if you live on the other side of the world, shipping right now is very expensive, or you have this awesome shirt that you want to print on, please go ahead, download it, print your own shirts, print your own stuff. If you want to save shipping, if you don't want a brand new shirt to circle around the world, super fine with me. This is, for me, it's all about, you know, spreading the message. So, or if you want a cup or, a mouse pad <laughs> or a poster for your shop. Go ahead, download the design, use it for free. I am just happy to spread the message. Right, wow, that was a lot. I hope you're still there. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next week with a new video that will hopefully be less theoretical and more on the practical side. All right, guys, take care. Bye.